We have Lucien Borden, Customer Success Advisor at Trezor. He will walk you on a journey towards financial sovereignty. Here's the how and the why you should self-custody. So please give it up for Lucien. Hi, everyone. So I hope she didn't spoil the whole talk already. Um, so I'm Lucien. I'm from the Trezor Expert team. Um, Trezor Expert launched yesterday. It's been announced on the main stage uh, by our CEO, Maché. And so at Trezor Expert, we're going to provide an onboarding service for newcomers so uh, they can start with self-custody with uh, confidence. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about self-custody and probably already lots of you already know all about it. But we talk to a lot of beginners as well who don't really know um, why self-custody or they'd like to get started with self-custody but they don't really know where uh, to get started. So um, today we're going to take it from the top. We're going to go over what self-custody is, um, why you'd want to do self-custody, and then um, why hardware wallets are the best choice for you to do self-custody. And in the end, we'll go over some little tips and best practices to stay safe in self-custody. So self-custody means holding your own Bitcoin instead of someone else holding it for you. So let's break it down. Let's see, let's see what that means. So someone else holding your Bitcoin. So we, we're used to that in, um, in the fiat system where someone, a third party, a bank, has to hold your money. And so in the Bitcoin world, you can also have an exchange, for example, hold your Bitcoin. And in that case, you don't own any Bitcoin. They own your Bitcoin and you have an IOU. So you've got your back with fiat paper money. And so if something happens, um, for example, the financial crisis, contagion, or through the life of Bitcoin, we've seen countless exchanges just get hacked or be mismanaged and just go down with everyone's money and, and people rarely get any Bitcoin back. And also, even if your exchange goods for the money, uh, that means you also need permission to use your money. So um, you, your accounts might be uh, suspended or frozen or the exchange might be unavailable. And as a result, you might not be able to access that money when you most need it. And so now Bitcoin fixes this. That was the technological breakthrough of Bitcoin is that you're able to hold your money and to use it however you want without anyone, any third party, any bank having to be in the middle. So that's uh, what we say, your keys, your coins, because when you hold a piece of Bitcoin, obviously you don't hold it in your hand like that. Bitcoin's digital. So what you hold is a private key. So you can think of it as some sort of long password that helps you um, control that piece of Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network. So when you own your Bitcoin like that, when you own the key, you're the only person that can use this, this Bitcoin. You can use it however you want, make any transaction you want, and no one can take it from you. It's completely permissionless. You have all the power over your own money. So in order for a technology to succeed, it must be convenient and accessible to all. So this is actually from Satoshi Labs manifesto and Satoshi Labs, a company behind Trezor. And um, it's been created to make Bitcoin more convenient and accessible. And usually in the early days of a technology, it's uh, neither very convenient or accessible. So for example, uh, we can compare it, uh, we can compare it to the early days of the auto industry. So at first cars looked like that. They weren't very uh, practical because you had to start them with a crank. Uh, they were very hard to drive. You needed mechanical knowledge to be able to handle them and to maintain them. And they were quite dangerous as well. So um, car manufacturers themselves actually um, thought that only a few thousand people in the world would ever be able to drive cars. Then in 1908, um, Henry Ford uh, came in and completely changed the game with the Ford Model T. So that was the first um, streamlined 
car, basically he wanted to make the automobile accessible to millions of people. So what he did is that he streamlined the manufacturing process, he made the car easy to drive, convenient and affordable. So the rest of the auto industry started from there and it gave people lots of economic empowerment, lots of new mobility and it had really good uh, outcomes for the individual. And in the early days of Bitcoin, it was, um, it, it was a bit similar. It was hard to access that technology, so you had to use uh, wallets on your phone or on your computer. And the problem is that it wasn't very secure because you're storing that private key on a machine that connects to the internet. So a hacker is able uh, to come in and steal those private keys and steal your Bitcoin. So people would spin up setups where you'd have a completely offline computer that you use just for your private key, and then you would sign a transaction and transfer it back to a connected computer. And as you can imagine, that wasn't very uh, convenient at all. Also, people didn't have a good way of making a backup of the wallet. So if anything happened to your computer, you would just lose the Bitcoin. A lot of Bitcoin got simply just lost, destroyed in these early days. And People would also make uh, what we call paper wallets. So you would just print a private key directly on a piece of paper. And again, that wasn't very convenient or secure at all. So as more and more people wanted to use Bitcoin and the price was going up, it became very clear that we needed a better way to, um, to do Bitcoin self-custody. So Satoshi Labs was created in 2013 in in search of a solution to that problem. And in 2014, they released the Trezor Model 1, which was the first uh, hardware wallet. So the first hardware wallet was created here in Prague by Satoshi Labs. And it brought to the market a solution that is streamlined, that's convenient, that anyone can use. And the rest of the hardware wallet industry just started from there. And today, millions of people use hardware wallets to keep their Bitcoin safe. So let's go over why is the hardware wallet so secure? So hardware wallets give you complete offline security for your private key. So now instead of having your private key on a computer or a phone, you generate that private key on a little machine that can never reveal it to the computer, that can never be hacked from the internet. So it will always keep your private key completely offline, completely safe from any hacking or online threat. Then it gives you a really good, convenient way to make a backup for your wallet. So the idea is that if your uh, device breaks down or if you lose it, you need a way back into, um, into your wallet, into your Bitcoin. So, and also, we don't want to make a copy on the computer because that would completely defeat the purpose. So what you see uh, up there on the right, that's a Bitcoin private key. So you could write that down on a piece of paper to make a copy, but that would lead to a lot of mistakes. So the solution that was um, brought to market with the Trezor Model 1 that is still in use today is the recovery seed phrase or the wallet backup or recovery seed backup. And so that is just, it basically converts that private key information into a list of words that you can just uh, easily write down on a piece of paper without mistakes. And then you can use that to recover your wallet later. And finally, uh, hardware wallets give you um, user friendliness. They're very easy to use. So you can just take it out of the box, connect it to the computer, install the app, and you can get started, write down the words for a new wallet, send some Bitcoin to it, and you don't have to watch endless YouTube videos to be able to do it or read books about cryptography anyone is able to use um, a hardware wallet and get state-of-the-art security. So hardware wallets keep your keys safe in the digital world. So that problem has been solved. You don't have to worry about any online threats on your private keys or anything like that. So, but you keep your keys safe in the real world. So that's uh, the little pieces of advice and best practices basically I want to go over is about keeping those keys safe in the real world. So it all has to do with the recovery seed phrase. The recovery seed phrase literally represents your Bitcoin. So it serves as an offline copy of your wallet. And if something happens 
to the device, you can just re-enter that list of words onto another uh, device, and it will just recreate the same wallet, and you'll recover access to the Bitcoin. So the trick is, if you give someone else that recovery seed phrase, they can also have your Bitcoin. So the idea is that it's been created offline. You want to keep it offline at all times, so it's not exposed to any hacks or threats. So only always keep it to pen and paper. You don't want to be taking pictures of it on your phone or putting it in an email or your notes or a password manager or anything like that. Only uh, offline copies. And then you really want to keep it secret as well. So you don't want to send it to anyone, obviously, because they will take your Bitcoin. And keeping in mind that it's the internet, people on the internet can be a bit tricky and send you emails pretending to be exchange support agents or hardware wallet support agents telling you your account will be deactivated or your hardware wallet is broken or something like that to get you a little bit in panic. But this is always basically a scam. So never enter the words anywhere. The only thing that will happen is that they will just steal your Bitcoin. As long as you remember that, you'll always be safe. So uh, double checking the backup. That's always a good idea as well. So Trezor Hardware Wallet have that check backup option where the device will ask you to enter the words uh, directly into the device and it will tell you if it actually uh, checks out. So you can do that when you start a new wallet for, to have the peace of mind that you actually uh, didn't make any spelling mistake. And also, if you have an older wallet as well, we, we talk to uh, people um, in conferences and they tell us we've got um, they've got very old hardware wallets and with lots of Bitcoin on it and they've written down that um, recovery seed phrase years ago and they've never double checked it. So if, if this is you, you might want to double check it because always remember you are responsible for maintaining that only copy of the recovery seed phrase. Obviously we don't have that information so you need to make sure that it's correct and also make sure that you know where it is located because if anything happens to the device you need that information um, to reaccess your wallet. Uh, then if you have the need for that, you can make your recovery seed phrase bulletproof. So there's many options on the market where you can etch or stamp your recovery seed phrase uh, on a piece of metal. Uh, Trezor released uh, earlier this year the Trezor Keep Metal, which is a really, really convenient uh, solution so you've got this metal uh, tube and you can just punch the letters for your recovery seed phrase directly on the metal which is as you may already know much more resistant than paper more durable so that gives you a bulletproof uh, backup that is uh, fireproof waterproof and that is also um, more difficult to lose or misplace or uh, throw away by accident which brings me uh, to my last point, which is to keep it simple. Um, basically, if you have a bigger wallet, you might become concerned that someone is going to steal your recovery seed phrase, steal your information, and be able to access your wallet. And that's a very legitimate concern. There's some ways, uh, some advanced features to mitigate that. Um, but in, in general, the best bet is to just basically hide that information well and not do anything funny with it. For example, not cutting the seed phrase in half or um, staying away from any sort of puzzles or treasure maps or Caesar ciphers or anything like that because chances are you will actually basically play yourself and, and become unable to access your wallet if something happens and you need to uh, restore. And we see that uh, in the industry that it's actually much more likely to do something like that and, 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 and lose access to your Bitcoin due to something like that rather than someone actually uh, stealing the Bitcoin. So I think the best bet usually is to keep it simple. So the recovery seed phrase, you always want to keep it secret offline. Never type it on the computer for any reason. Uh, you can double check it once in a while. Make sure you know where it's located. You can make it bulletproof with uh, metal solutions like Trezor Keep Metal. And also remember to keep it simple, 
just know where it is, know where it's located. Usually, that is your best bet. OK, and that's um, going to be it for me. But so um, we launched Trezor Expert yesterday to help newcomers set up with their Trezor hardware wallet. So we offer one-on-one -on -one sessions where we provide guidance. We create your new wallet with you so you can make sure you're not making some mistake. You can ask any question you want. This is one-on-one uh, -on -one with one of the Trezor Expert team. So if you think this is for you, um, please reach out to us. We'd be very happy to hear from you. Um, and also, I'd like to give a big shout out to the whole Trezor Expert team, uh, to everyone at Trezor, at Satoshi Labs, that made Trezor Expert possible. We're very happy to be able to launch that product. And that's going to be it for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm Lucia. Thank you very much. And I hope you're having, uh, you have a fantastic rest of your conference. Thank you.